Hey, 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 guys and gals, and welcome back to Oregon Trail. That's right, we are on the road past Las Vegas, heading towards a cryptic mine. And the only reason we're doing that instead of starting in Las Vegas is because I accidentally hit the escape key while booting up the game. But we live with my dysfunctions. It is what it is. So we've rummaged two scrap off a body on the side of the road. Maybe he's armor plating himself. Maybe he was just role playing the Tin Man. Who knows? But he had scrap all over him. Now we're getting pretty close to the end of our road. Let's take a look and see what this is. Let's investigate and hopefully we don't get bit by zombies. You see a shady looking fellow with a game of cups set up at the side of the road. Care to try your luck? Two out of three chance to win. Only $20. Yeah, I'm not much of a gambler. I wasn't I'm not feeling lucky. I don't really like the cup game anyways, especially when I can't see the way that the cup is being manipulated by his griftery little hands. And let's see how far we have here. We have 180 miles or so. It's going to be about another day before we get there maybe. Assuming everything goes according to plan, a bandit sneaks up on you and grabs Superman. I think we've had this situation before to be honest. Let's see what we can do here. And so down he goes. We only get one shot. But we made it count, and so brain mass all over the floor, we continue moving towards our new location. We got about seven, oh, we get caught in a blizzard. Unfortunately, that's going to hurt the health of our individuals. Let's take a look at everybody. Olsen, Gazer, Batman, yeah, everybody's looking okay. They're not looking too worse for wear. We also found some fruit along the way. Now, I'm going to have to make up for the fact that I accidentally, I think we were more or less done there anyways. God, Superman's got to stop hanging out with, he keeps finding all these weird people out in the bush. And it really is getting him into trouble. Let's see if I can get this wheeled in the way that I want it here. Come on. Wheel the way that I desire you to. There we are. And so straight over the top of his head, and we've killed yet another bandit. You'd think Superman would be able to hold off, but maybe zombieism has just completely wiped out all of his Superman powers. I don't know, maybe the sun has been blocked or something. He can't get any energy anymore. Who knows? The muffler broke, but we were able to fix it. So we're at a mine now. And that's a lovely picture. He's got a hole in his chest. That kind of sucks. Let's take a look at the market first and foremost and see what they've got. They've got a med kit and some food, so nothing that we really need at the time. We can also sell things for reasonable prices here, though, but we need to scavenge very, very badly. So let's take a look at our supplies. Zombie activity is pretty high for the moment. I think if we look at our party menu, we should be able to rest for a little while. And so let's give it seven hours there, and that'll leave us enough time after we've rested to go through, repair our vehicle a little bit because we definitely need to take care of that. We'll look around on the jobs board and see if there's anything there to pass some time. If there indeed is, we'll see what loot we can wrangle that way. We may trade a little bit. I've got to take a look at my supplies because in between these episodes I tend to forget what I have on hand. It's tough to remember the inventories of like multiple games and what you're kind of holding and what's around. I do however remember that in the Zomboid LP that there's shotgun shells at the gas station so I don't forget everything. The important stuff sticks with me. Let's take a look, and now that everybody's healed up, how's that station wagon holding up? We may need to scavenge a little bit before that's going to work out for us. Let's look around town for jobs. He's having trouble sleeping for $8. We can kill, eh, that's not nearly enough money. Combat trainer's got nothing for us. Car, there's nothing we can really do with our car. We could set our pace to be a little bit quicker. I suppose we'll spend an hour or two once $13 for one battery. Now we have absolutely no use for our batteries, so I guess we'll wait a couple hours until the zombie activity goes down and just see what we can trade for. Has one battery for seven scrap. We still, we don't need batteries, guys. We've got a battery that never ceases to stop. It never ceases functioning. I was trying to make that sentence far more complicated than it needed to be. 43 ammo for a battery. What is up with all these people with batteries? One tire for one muffler. Yeah, I'll take an extra tire. Willing to trade two fuel for one muffler. Yeah, we'll do that one too. Why not? Two mufflers on hand I think should be more than enough to get us the remainder of the way to the west coast. Zombie activity is high at 6 in the morning, so I'm actually going to rest for a few more hours. Let's do like another three and see where that lands us. It'll at bare minimum, it'll get rid of those tiny little slivers. Being the OCD individual that I am, I like to see full health bars. It makes me feel a lot better. We are going through our food fairly rapidly, which... A little weak, but it's something that we can live with. Now, zombie activity is at medium, so let's get our scavenge on for a little bit. Looks like we've got 321 bullets left. That's okay, it's a reasonable amount. It's not enough to wear. Oh, God. Okay, so the bear is back, unfortunately. There seem to be a number of just nasty, irradiated zombie bears. We can slow them down by getting them in the face with a bullet. I do absolutely want that med kit. Let me get him with one more and just slow him for another second or two because I feel very nervous about his trajectory. He looks like he just wants a hug. His little stubby arms are out and he's just like, eh, hug me. 
I got turned into a zombie. I would need a hug too if I got turned into a zombie, but don't be fooled. It would just be a ruse for me to bite you. That would be the only reason that I wanted a hug. It would not be for the normal reason that I might need a hug, like self-validation. Maybe I've had a hard day. Zombies, no. Mostly just a ruse. They're crafty little buggers. We'll do another go here. Zombie activity continues to be low to medium. That's a can of food right there. That's going to help us out. We are not low on food, but we're definitely not where I'd like to be. I'd prefer to be over a thousand, so this may turn into a little bit of a scavenging episode. Let me nail down that guy just to make sure he doesn't get too close. And yeah, we're going to have to cross the T here. So let's see if we can make it. Our walk speed was increased previously, so hopefully that'll benefit us in the long run here. But I think I am going to have to take some shots and get rid of some of the more aggressive members of this posse of undead. It doesn't appear as though we're going to get a third respawn, so woe is us. We will continue forward with our little brown pea, our little brown tea hat. Sometimes your tea hat is all that you have. 120 ounces of food. Not terrible, but not amazing. We'll go another one. The scrap is what I'm more worried about, so if we can't get our hands on some scrap, we can't repair our station wagon. Are we getting dogs or are we getting the bear? Okay, we got the bear again. I can totally bear that. It's not a big deal. It's completely bearable. Oh, and there's a wallet over here. So maybe it's the bear's wallet. Maybe that's why he's so upset. He's like, I've lost my wallet. Help me find my wallet. Be a good Samaritan. Please don't spawn over here next node. If you spawn over here, I will just be drastically frustrated with you. Although we may only get two nodes. Oh, I probably could have outran that one, but it's okay. We're getting our scrap on. We're getting a little bit of scrap here. We're going to spend the rest of the day once it jumps up to high. This is just going to be a scavenging episode. Unfortunately for those among you who dislike watching me scavenge, there's going to be a great deal of scavenging in this episode because I do want to make the best run that we can towards the final destination after Las Vegas. This is one of the last major stops on our trip. I think we hit like one other... Actually, we may not even hit one other. It may just be all small road stops, little pit stops, little pee and stops from there. So hopefully we can get the things we need at this location. I'm actually going to cut back down and go around that way. I think it's going to make us... Oh, God, until Crawly over here decided to make my day nastier. I'm going to call him Crawly Chris. That's his new name. If he was a rapper, it'd be Crawly Chris, the zombie rapper. Unfortunately, oh, there we go. That's exactly, if we can get this cart right here and then hopefully lock down a couple scraps on this go, I think we're going to be in a really, really good position to keep moving. Take a few final shots here and just wait out the secondary spawn. A little bit of money. I'll take that in lieu of anything else. I mean, rather than not having a second spawn, I'll definitely take it. But, you know, it's not precisely what I wanted to get my hands on. Ammunition's looking a little dry. We are going to need a lot of ammunition for the final encounter once we get to the west coast. I don't really know how this is going to go, so I'm going to start clearing as though I'm going to have to retreat this way. Yeah, I'm glad I did because my zombie senses were indeed tingling. Let's take stock really quickly. So we've got $555. That's a lot of money. Four tires, two mufflers, 956 food, 70 scrap. Let's do another two scavenges. So two more scavenges, and I think we should have all the things that we need. If we can't grab any more scrap, I mean, the only reason I'm grabbing all this excess scrap is because we absolutely need to do car repairs before we leave here. The station wagon is just not going to make it before we go back on the road. So there's another med kit. I'll take that. Med kits are never something that I will turn up my nose at. There's a lot of things in the zombie apocalypse that you could turn your nose up at. There's a lot of disturbing smells, one would assume. And so you would constantly be turning up your nose or at the bare minimum pinching it. Clothespins seem to be one of those things that you might need to trade for, but... Uh, I don't like this. Got me surrounded, and that's the last thing I want. Third node? I don't think so, but 15 ounces of food and a med kit. Maybe I'll sell a med kit here. We've got five. That's a lot of med kits. We'll do our final scavenge right here with our zombie abilities are at medium or our zombie presence. So I don't want it to get up to high before we leave the town because then we may get locked down here with a horde when we leave. If you stay around too long, it seems to trigger different events like the bikers and things of that nature. A little wallet over here. Miss a shot there because I'm a noob. Got a wallet and a little bit of food. I think that's going to work out for us. I like that. It was. It should be about 100 food, I think. Waste a tad of ammo there just because I'm feeling too lazy to press the keys. 
and I just want to stand here. Sometimes you just got to lean against something and be like, that is the end of my day. I am just too tired. We're not going any further. We shall go no further. And so that's going to be our final scavenging run. Let's see if we can get a little bit of repairing done on the station wagon. Unfortunately, I didn't get as much scrap as I would have liked, but that probably is why scrap is so expensive at this location. So let's hope that fortune is on our side here. Okay, Fortune was on our side, and that's good enough. I think I like where that's at. Let's go ahead and leave the area. And, oh, we're going to SLC, okay. Heading out to the SLC. If you were ever into punk rock, I would strongly recommend the movie SLC Punk. I mean, it's okay. It's a reasonably good movie. The second half is definitely what sells it. There's a tombstone in the difference. Of course, there's achievements related to this. Rest in peace, Alex Yeager. His beautiful hair could not save him. Oh, good. Looks like he's returned from the dead here. There we go, I got him. I point blanked him right in the face. I will take that as a result. We managed to escape. Not too far to SLC actually, so we're not gonna have to make a long run. The 20 units of fuel that we have, I believe, should last us till the end of the game. Not completely positive there, I mean, a backpack with some canned food, I'll take that. It's just laying on the side of the road, not suspect at all. <laughs> These peas smell like almonds. You find yourself surrounded by zombies, so we're gonna have to do a defense mission here, which is a little weak. Make that long bomb shot as best as possible. And one of the things that I've read about shooting is it doesn't matter if you go past yourself or whatever, as long as you come back to your chest after the initial click, the shot should still, and that example was just horrid, but I promise it works most of the time. I swear it. I swear it works most of the time. But anyways, as long as you go back to your chest, the shot should stay on course. I am definitely going to have to secure at least minimally lock down an ammo source before we go much further. The final combat's gonna cost us at least a hundred bullets, I would think. So... Okay, we survived, and then we should pull on up to the SLC. Nobody came out to help us. How depressingly terrible is that? Somebody should have at least come out and been like, Hey, man. Batman throws too fuel at a zombie. Damn it, Batman. Batman is just... Urgh. Batman is just kicking us repeatedly in the groin. And it's... It becomes saddening. The groin is well-worn at this point. It's like rawhide. So let's take a look at the market. There's a lot of things here, but the first thing I want to focus on are, well, we'll buy the bare minimum bullets then. There was only 20 units of it. So we'll take that. Med kits we don't really need. We'll take a look at fuel after we get done here. But let's look at the jobs. We've got 31 ammo for, ooh, if I can run this one. So 31 ammo for a search and retrieve mission. If I can make this one without taking many shots, I think we'll be okay. So let me see if I can lure things up towards the top of the screen for the spawn for the time being. Our movement should be a little bit quicker. As long as we don't spend 31 shots, this is going to be completely and totally a win-win for us because we needed ammo very badly. We're going to be cutting this one kind of close. Mm, shaving a haircut two bits, all that. I'm not going to risk these guys right here, but I am going to keep on ignoring him. We're going to have to watch out for this dude on the bottom of the wall. Take a quick shot there. Maybe a quick shot there for the diagonal. But yeah, we came out on top there. That's not so bad. A close shave, definitely trimming the hairs very, very close to the nub. But we got 31 ammo. For 19 food, they want us to get into a shootout, and we'll do that as well. 19 food isn't a ton, but it's something. And it's a normal difficulty, so there's not that many of them. So we'll just take our shots and see how it goes. That's not going to make it. Yeah, the second I timed that one, I knew it was just going to be... Well, I can do this, I swear. Well, if I could aim, I could time it properly. Timing and aiming properly, therein lies the trick, and we are all done with that attack. So we got 19 food. Traded some of the bullets for the food, probably a little bit of a waste. We'll take a look at the auto shop here. They have a never break battery or a cow catcher. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of the never break, that's fine. Everything else is a little expensive and we have a reasonable supply of most things, so I'm not terrified of that either. Take a look at everybody's health, we could probably do with a bit of a rest. So it's 11 o'clock, let's give it 5 hours because we're not going to be able to leave town anyways until morning. We'll scavenge thrice. We shall scavenge thrice on the morrow! And that's what I will limit myself to. Because I always feel like I just scavenge way too much for these videos. Scavenging works if you want to win, but for making entertaining videos, as I've said in the past, watching me walk around going blip, bloop, blip, bloop, blonk is probably a little boring after the 30th or 40th run. We've got money, we've got food, we've got a little bit of scrap. How's the car doing? Station wagon is breaking down a tad. Let's see what trades we can wrangle here. There's no one to trade with. We'll wait till 6 a.m. See if anybody comes along with any deals that are tempting. 
Why is there a P in that word? I, I want like bomba, like with bomb. Why is there a B at the end? It's gotta be from like a Latin root somewhere or something. I'll wait one more time just because I like waiting for good trades. Must partially be the greedy bastard deep down within, but nobody wants to trade. So let's look at our scavenging. Zombie activity is at medium, so three scavenging missions, I swear. And there's another med kit. I think they're doing it just to spite me because in the past I've said that the med kit perk is absolutely worthless because it doesn't give you med kits when you need them, which I guess what I said stands true. We actually don't need med kits and now it's giving them all to us. It's just kind of doing the inverse of what I had implied or maybe just the opposite tail end. So the tails to the heads and so forth. That ammo is going to buy us a little bit of leeway for scavenging. It's going to make us a little bit more bullet spewy. It's going to make us a little bit more projectile-y. I'm just going to turn all kinds of things into adjectives at this point. Because I like to be surrounded by the gore of my foes. What could be better? Alright, so one medkit and 100 ounces of food. Worst case scenario, we have so many medkits at this point that we can definitely trade them. They're worth a lot of money anyways. We'll probably get 30, 40 bucks out of each one. Big old food cart there. Love that. Love that as a result. I'd like to see more scrap, though. Not gonna complain about a good thing. Love to see more scrap, so RNG gods, let's get on that. I'd hate to have to set up the altar and actually ingratiate myself, and they're choosing to spite me. Right now, you know, right now RNG Zeus is sitting up there with his lightning bolt, or his shopping cart full of food, and just deciding that, you know what, Splattercat's not gonna get what he wants today. He's just going to suffer. He's going to suffer like crazy. I had to go over to a hospital today, and speaking of suffering, there's tons of people suffering at the hospital, but something funny did happen while I was there. There was a construction worker, because they're kind of adding on to like one of the buildings or something of that nature. And the construction worker was carrying like a plate of brownies. He dropped one of them in the middle of the floor at like the laboratory area. He picked it up and put it back on the pile. And this is just a little bit of advice. He put it on the top, but I guarantee when he goes back to give those brownies to the rest of his construction workery friends, he's going to take one off the bottom. Just a little life hint from Splattercat. If you ever see someone, like if you've got someone with a plate full of cookies, and they're like, hey man, you want a cookie? And they take a cookie first, but they play Jenga with it. Like they take the cookie off the bottom of the pile. You should instantaneously be very, very concerned about where that plate's been. And you should also play Jenga with the cookie. I mean, I probably wouldn't take a cookie at all. That's just me personally. I'd leave the plate alone. This would be one of the few instances in which I would avoid a cookie. I mean, typically I am all over cookies like white on rice. So just cookies everywhere. Just om nom 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 nom, like cookie monster. But if your friend takes it and plays Jenga with the cookie pile, you should start being worried. Life advice from Splattercat. So I think that was our thrice... Yeah, we got 70. That was our thrice all completed. So 1382, 79 scrap. Let's go ahead and go back to town. And we're going to sell off some of this food because it's a reasonably decent price. We can sell 38 food, so we're going to get our cash situation back up. There we go. We're also going to sell... Ooh, those medkits. That's a low price. That's not a very good price. I'd rather keep it to heal with, to be fair. Let's move some of our... Actually, let's, let's heal our station wagon first, and then we'll sell the remainder. So first go here. 70% chance to go. Three little periods. Beep, beep, beep. And please, station wagon gods, let us be successful. Alright, and so we're going to do one more after this with the excess scrap. Oh no, I did it at 20%. I don't want this. If this succeeds though, I'm going to dance for joy. Yeah, I figured it was going to fail. 20% chance isn't something that I play Russian Roulette with, but, you know, since it happened anyways, I made a boo-boo, I made a problem, I kit lollied it, whatever you want to call it. And if this one fails, I'll be sad. Okay, that one failed, so we've got one more freebie attempt before we're eating into our 60 scrap that I like to keep on hand. We're also eating food at a very rapid pace. Batman just cannot leave that stuff alone. Alright, so the station wagon's looking a mighty fine right now, so what we're going to do is... Zombie activity's low. Let's leave town. Let's be on our merry way. You must cross a horde of zombies. That's exactly why I did it right now. They appear to be ravenous, but we're going to... Wait and see if the horde disperses because the horde side is small. We just want to wait and see what their attention span does. Zombies are not known. There we go. Moderate and docile. So we'll attempt to sneak through. We may take some losses here, but I refuse to waste ammo or anything else at this point. So it's looking good so far. I think we made it. Yep, there it is. And so we're all the way out the other end. Lucky us. We successfully sneaked through the horde. And we got 570 miles. So this is the long haul. Hopefully we don't get caught with all kinds of slowing events because that'll make this entire thing take even longer. But thus far, this series has been pretty success. It's been pretty successful. I almost said pretty suck vestful. I don't even know what a suck vestful is, but I almost said it. 
That's where my brain went with the consonants there. A heavy fog rolls in and we're traveling more slowly. Unfortunate. Unfortunate, but we'll live with it. I'm not going to complain. I live in a very foggy place. Batman ha or Superman has a fever. Oh, I clicked stop, but that's fine. Let's take a look and make sure... Okay, health's all full, so we'll jump back on the road here. Hey, you, get back on the road. There we go. All right. And so we think we see something in the distance. Let's go investigate. We should always investigate these sort of things. You and Tommy Olsen walk towards a mine when you hear people crying for help. You both run inside. Voices echo off the walls. You can't make out where the voices are coming from. Olsen starts climbing down a ladder. It suddenly collapses and you hear him tumble down into the hole. You hear them hit the ground. After a moment of silence, they yell up to you. I'm all right, but I'm trapped down here. You're going to have to figure out a way to get me out. A nearby radio chips. We grab the radio. Hello? Oh, thank God. Please, you have to help us. There are five of us down here. We've become trapped in the eastern tunnel. There should be some explosives up there, but we need you to light it and throw it down the western tunnel. That should collapse the wall between them, and we will be able to climb out over the rubble. The western tunnel is where Tommy Olsen fell. The explosives would work the same if you throw it down either tunnel. Well, then wouldn't I be blowing up Tom? I mean, I don't even know these people. This kind of reminds me, there was a psych... There was a ethical test I did in a class one time where they were like, if you had to push a guy into the train tracks to save a train full of people, which is the ethical choice? And so Tommy was in, let me make sure really quickly, they're in the east. And eh, let's free Tommy. You decide to save your companion over the lives of some strangers. You light the explosives and toss them down to the eastern passage. You hear a moment of panic from the people in the tunnel, followed by a large explosion. It collapses. After a moment, you see Tommy Olsen climb out safely. That was a close one. What happened to the other people? You can't look Tommy Olsen in the eyes. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Who knows, they could have been bandits. They could have just robbed me the second that I did anything. So you never know with these situations. You can't judge me. You can't judge me. So being back on our merry, Gazer has T-Virus. God, well, isn't T-Virus just the virus from Resident Evil? So he was already zombified, so I really don't think that's, a tire dies on you, but you replace it from supplies. Gazer, you've got too many diseases. I'm starting to get nervous, man. I may have to shoot you. I may have to put you down. It's nothing, I mean, I appreciate you and everything. Looks like something is happening off the side of the road. Let's go look! Events! Events everywhere! You spot a crumpled man up against a tree. He calls out to you. Hey there, stranger! Can you spare a med kit for a dying old man? If not, a bullet to the head would be just as welcome. Let's mercy kill him, I suppose. I mean, he said he couldn't decide between the two, so... We'll go ahead and blast him one, I guess. Sorry, bud. Them's the ropes in the apocalypse. I'm not a cruel man, so I'm not gonna walk away and leave him there, but... He said either way. I mean, he said he was dying, so I don't- I think the medkit- Superman gets shot by a stray bullet. Normally, I don't think this would matter. Just... Just... You know, thinking about the properties of Superman, the... Hey, he got healed, so he no longer has a fever. So we're going to get into town, and then we're going to have a good long rest to see if we can get everybody all tailored up here. The airbase. We got a guy with some 3D goggles on there. Guy running around with an axe and gloves in the background. Let's see what we can get done in town. And this may be our last stop, depending on how long this takes. They've got ammunition. Always good. We'll take 60 rounds. And that's going to put us evenly at 600. I love it when things work out like that. Just nice even numbers make me happy. There's a hostile group of folk in another building, so it's a suicidal difficulty. I'm not going to take it. $27 isn't worth it. Combat trainer, he's got money scavenger. We can replace, but we have so much money, there's not really a whole lot of call for it right now. Let's take a look at... Where is the... Let's see here. Alright, so... Because there's a lack of an auto shop, what we might consider is getting our rest on. It's 5 a.m., so let's give it a good six hours and see where that puts everybody. I think that should be enough. We may have to scavenge to get just evened out. I mean, I think with 800 food we could make it, but if something goes wrong and we end up holed up somewhere, I'd like to have a little surplus. Gazer no longer has the T-Virus, so I guess it's a little less, it's a little less aggressive than the one that I saw in the movies. I don't think seven hours is actually going to do it. Superman was pretty beat up. We might consider using one of those excess med kits to save us a bit of time so that we can scavenge and get out of town today, which is what I think I'll do. 
Let's scavenge a couple times and then we'll get the hell on out of here. So that's actually gonna solve our problem almost instantaneously. That's a hundred food already in the bag. Well, literally in the bag. We've got a hundred food in a bag. So both sayings, you know, I guess I have nothing more to say there. We've pretty much nailed the, the euphemism on the head. That's the best we can do. There is no other euphemism that would better describe that situation. Grab that $5 bill, y'all. And then we'll sit and wait and hope that we get a third spawn. Nothing. That's about, you know, it's not unexpected. We got food, which is really what I'm on the hitch for right now. We've got us, not over a barrel. I wouldn't use over a barrel for this situation, but I like to be safe than sorry. Now, can we get more fuel from them? Someone will spell 42 ammo for $13. Yes, we will absolutely take that. A stranger is willing to trade five fuel for 56 food. Oh my... Oh my god, ask and ye shall receive, it looks like. So, we got our fuel situation, and I was just worried about that. Providence. Providence from Fuel Jesus. Let's grab this last bag down here, but we're going to be very careful on approach. And then we're going to get the hell away from it as quickly as possible as well. Shoot him because he's hanging out next to a wall, and that's my wall, friend. That is my wall. I claim it. Splattercat's wall. Property of the Nerd Castle. That's what we call it. And he just walked, he, that means he p potentially punched a hole in our wall. Now the graphics don't allow that to be shown, but we owe him double because he punched a hole in the Nerd Castle's wall. That's not an acceptable circumstance. Are we only going to get one spawn there, or did I pick up two already? I think I only picked up one. That could end up being a little weak. They'll do a recap at the end. I was busy talking and shooting at the same time, and I like to limit my activities to two at a time because I really can't handle three. We did do two, so there's 15 scrap and 100 ounces of food. I like our situation almost. So one more thing of food, and then we can get the hell on out of here. Maybe fix the car up a tad. Another med kit. We are just stacked on med kits. That is going to replace the one that we're going to use on Superman. So that's all fine and doodly dandy. There's a little bag of food, like a little flower bag. I don't really like the little flower bags, but we'll take it. I'm not going to walk away from a potential resupply. Got some cash right there in the center. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any way for me to close with that one in time if I try and go all the way around and I'm still gonna end up shooting people so in the interest of expediency we're just going to blast a zombie and keep on a rolling I almost made a Limp Biscuit joke but I'm pretty sure I made the Limp Biscuit joke about rolling 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 already and plus that's like 20 years too late that's an embarrassing that's a that's a reference that just embarrasses me so we're settled here let's repair the car twice and once the car has been repaired twice we shall head out on the road, get our motor running, and see if we can make it to the next location before time runs out. We've got a couple minutes left. We'll cut this one a little bit longer. That's enough for the station wagon. Let's get on out of here. So off we go. 322 miles to the safe haven. Broken down cars block the road. Navigating the debris takes an hour. So we may actually be able to resolve this one. And you hear gunfire from nearby buildings. Luckily, none of it went ping, ping, ping off of the chassis of our lovely Woody station wagon here. When I was a kid, I listened to a lot of Beach Boys, and this was one of the cars that I always wanted for some reason. Mostly because it was on all the album covers and whatnot. I mean, I only had, like, the greatest hits thing where they are all drawn out, all trippy and shroomed out. Sparks shoot out the back. Your muffler is dragging on the ground. Time to replace it. You replace it from some supplies. I grew up near Oakland and Vallejo. You try to drive through a flooded street, it doesn't work. Great, the station wagon is taking a beating. Anyways, I grew up near Vallejo, and in Vallejo for a little while they had these things that would... Gazer gets shot by a stray bullet. I blame Batman. It wasn't me, I swear. But they had these things that would drag on the ground and throw sparks before they were made illegal. Let's go ahead and stop in the greater interest of Gazer, because I would love to get him patched up with a med kit before we go into the next location. So we'll give him two... Give them all one. Yeah, we'll give ourselves one. There we go. We're looking pretty good going into this final gambit. And that should be it right there. Seven miles to the safe house. And let's see if we can knock out this. We get caught in a blizzard right before we get there. The safe haven. Welcome. They're so friendly here. What great people. Hi there. Welcome to safe haven. I'd let you in, but the power grid is down for maintenance. You need to power the bridge if you want to get in. There should be an old gas generator and some fuel laying around. Go gather it up and hurry. It looks like there's a horde heading this way. Of course there is, and this is a very, very clear reference to Left 4 Dead. We've got to get 10 out of 10 gas cans. I'm actually going to count, so we got 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'm going to go out as far out as I can and work my way inwards. I'm going to grab the bullets, though. This was 8, as I recall, and so we'll go 9, 10, and it's going to make me walk, I can tell. 
Yep. Big ol' long walk. It's okay, though. I'm not hating. We could use the exercise. We've been sitting around in a car eating Twinkies and fiber bars for the last month or so. So who's going to complain about it? So there's our two gas cans right there. I think on the easier modes, you're allowed to carry three gas cans at a time. But either way, you still have to make, like, four trips. So really, there's only a difference of, like, one trip. I am going to fight my way back as best as possible. Just to avoid the possibility of getting trapped. I don't see too many enemies for the time being. I was assuming there'd be a lot more of them. I forgot that ammo dropped on the ground, actually, during this minigame. So I could actually pick up these bullets here. I think each one gives you, like, five, though. It's not very much. Let's check and find out. I wasn't paying attention the last one. I picked up ten bullets. So it's not, like, amazing. If you're completely tapped out of ammo, it'll barely be enough to get you by. But considering we've got more than enough ammo, I think we'll be okay. So we'll drop these two off right here. As we get back near the car, they're actually going to shoot and clear off the zombies. You see that? They'll start dying off. So let me see what I can do to drag them back in. There we go. And so now we've got a nice little run. Ooh, that wall behind me blocked the bullet. That's weak. Six, seven, and then the next one out is going to be the one we're going to take. And so that should be three and four. If I'm miscounting right now, feel free to scream at your screen. Be like, you arithmetically challenged idiot. What are you doing? Feel free. I won't mind. I would scream it at myself, to be honest. You crawlery guy, go away. No one loves you. Like, that's a little harsh. I think somebody loves me. <laughs> Depends if your mother's dead, I guess. Just had to throw a mama joke in there somewhere. Depends if your mama's dead. So that leaves us with six cans remaining. Run and grab these. You'd think that he could do a little bit better than this weird lockstep that he's been doing the entire adventure. Like, at some point, you would figure he would get the let out and decide to take off running. I'm going to be pretty surprised if we got everybody here alive. I don't really know what happens. I shot all my... The, the last time I played through, I shot all of my members of my party who were zombified, so... There wasn't a whole lot of opportunity there to kind of find out and experiment. I wanted to just kind of get there and complete the game, get the achievements, get the cards, all that fun stuff that Steam's been doing lately. We'll grab these last two, and then there we go. Shazowie, we are out of here. You start the generator and enter safe haven. Distance traveled, 5,700. So let's see how we did on our score here. The station wagon's a little beat up. Probably could have stopped beforehand. I, I didn't really pay attention to the scores before, but we did pretty well. Not bad. We did it on difficult. 17,600. Feel free to jump up on the Facebook page or the Twitter and let me know how you guys did with this. But let's finish this thing off. We've unlocked 50 tombstones. I don't really know what that means. You can look at them in the options. And this is one of the coolest credits rolling that I've ever seen. You get to just run over zombies that are named after the developers. So, that all out of the way. Another successful LP, or at least I think so. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Splattercat, and it's always fun here at the Nerd Castle to have you guys. This is a Many Hats production. I think it's Men That Wear Many Hats or something like that as the developer. In either case, developers, if you ever get the chance to see this movie or this series of films, I thank you for your effort making such a fun and reminiscent game of my past. It definitely made me nostalgic, so... Thank you everybody else for joining me during the course of this whole thing. If you made it's not an entirely too long series, but I do want to thank you anyways for being here the entire time. I'll see you guys next time, and that zombie is in a wheelchair. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.